Hello and welcome to PM Personality Profile. My name is Nana Ansakwa the fourth. And uh, as you know, every Friday, repeated on Saturdays, I bring to your house a personality, somebody whose story is worth telling. However, this personality, I have brought him before. But then he has just achieved a new milestone. So we thought it's worth telling his story again. And he wouldn't finish telling his story. I have always called him Ojie here for why? Because he's dedicated himself to serving humanity. Those without a voice, those without the opportunity to speak for themselves, he has always, with his pen, with his microphone or lenses, championed their causes and indeed positively liberated them. Who am I talking about? Seth Kwame Bwati, my brother from another mother, who's come up with fantastic documentaries freeing people from prison, giving people medical aid. And here he is, DJA Journalist of the Year. Well-deserved award. Well, thank you very much for staying. And we've got into the exciting part. So start at the poolside of uh, Alisa Hotel. Thanks to Alisa Hotel Management, who allow us to use their premises as and when we need it. That's very grateful of them. Indeed, it's a very serene atmosphere. And if you haven't come here, you're missing out. So do come here. But you know what? I'm here to talk to my brother from a different mother, Seth Kwame Bwati. I mean, every day he makes me proud. Every day he makes me proud. And he doesn't cease to amaze me. And you know, sometimes I refuse to be surprised, but you know, he, he, he always you know, go that one step to surprise me. But I'm sure I'm not the only one with that feeling because even the number of calls that are coming through his phones shows that the sentiment uh, general. And uh, we've spoken to him before, but by then he hadn't reached this milestone. So then he moves one up, and I'm sure next time I said to him that he'll be the UN Secretary General <laughs> or something. So we'll keep talking to him as he goes up. So, Congratulations Hello. from me, from my viewers, from the team of multimedia, from all of us, we say congratulations. Thank you, the modern chief. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and let, let me make this official. Next year, I'll be five years on the throne, mm. and I'm speaking to my elders in Edumasa, and we want to make you a chief in charge of social welfare. Really? Yes, yes. Oji and here for. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful. For. Yes, yes, yes. So I'll speak to. The elders so been no OGA here for no, 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 OGA here for Kwame okay. Bwati. <laughs> no, no, OGA here for Kwame Bwati. So you've been in charge of welfare and advising, you know, the chief. I'm ready to serve. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad. So this, this is official. <laughs> Thank you, Nana. <laughs> but you know, I, I've only have an hour, and you, your story is more than an hour. Mm. So I'll do what I can do, mm. <laughs> and I'll start from the GJA Awards. Yeah. I mean, this is big. Mm. And let me point it out to viewers that any time there's a GCA award, the next morning, he shouldn't have won it, she shouldn't have gotten it, he shouldn't, you know. But with yours, mm. we all agree that it was due. Mm. Let it go. With a resounding round of applause and probably a standing ovation, my pleasure and our pleasure to announce to you the PAV ANSA GJA Journalist of the Year. And the award will go to, please put your hands together for Seth Sen Kwame Bwati, Joy 99.7 FM. He deserves a standing ovation. Let's do it for him, ladies and gentlemen. I haven't had any bickering. I don't know if you've had. No, I've, I've had a number of calls from some doctors, professors, um, lecturers, editors telling me I deserved it. Mm. That they had been expecting this long ago and that I've worked for this. Mm. All the people who called me, I remember Dr. Rekub Rube called me mm -hmm. and told me, Seth, I'm proud of you. You deserve this award. Wow. It's long overdue. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's the, the calls I've been receiving from people, and it's very humbling, seriously. Very, very humbling that, wow, everybody calls to, to tell me you deserve this, and I'm grateful to God. Well, we're going to walk through some of the documentaries that Seth has done, and what amazes me is, you know, you know uh, politics seems to be a very, you know, 
easy target and mm. you know most of us we easily just chase a political mm. story and this but i mean your stories are literally the ones that we've taken an eye off the ball mm. but it's killing us you know and uh, let me start with uh, the, the, the bloody land yeah the bloody land what was it about it was the disturbances in nankanduri you know somewhere last year they fought they killed themselves, they destroyed properties, um, school, schools were closed, curfew imposed on the area. And I remember one morning I woke up and I told Elvis, I want to go to Nampanduri. My Elvis is my editor, news editor. He said, are you serious? I said, yes, I'll go. <laughs> because the place wasn't, wasn't safe. And I said, yeah, I'll go. So I put things together. I got my cameraman, Solo, who went with me. We got to Nagpanduri at six and we were arrested. It was curfew time. Huh? We had forgotten, so we were arrested. And in Nagpanduri. In Nagpanduri. Because as soon as we entered the town, the place was quiet. People were asleep. At six on the dot. Then we were filming. Oh, serene atmosphere. People no around, <laughs> no know it was curfew time. <laughs> now as we moved, we saw a team of military men, police ahead of us. Hey, hey, what are you guys doing? So we are from Joy News. And so what? It's curfew time. Well, pick them up. My cameraman and the driver were shaking. I was comfortable because I was enjoying it, you know. I knew that they would not put me in. I, I was so assured. They would take them too. So they took me to their superior. We got there, he was so annoyed. Curfew time, hey, put, him, put them in a guard room. Hey. That was the moment I realized that <laughs> if I don't make some calls, they're going to put me in. And my guys were still shivering, shaking, asking why they even came with me. I told them, just relax. So I told them that the regional security council gave me clearance. I've spoken to the regional minister. The DC here is aware. Perhaps they failed to call you to tell you that we are coming. They said yes. And since they didn't call us, we have to arrest you guys, detain you, put you in the guard room. So I told them, if they will allow me to make a few calls. So I called them, DC, he said, yeah, let me speak to them. They said they were not going to speak to the DC. You know, military men, they don't, they don't take instructions from people outside the military. So we're interacting with them. Then one asked, you said you work with uh, multimedia? I said, yes. Do you know Kaba? I said, yes. Do you know Nanaya Brefo? I said, yes. We love them, Pa. Do you have their numbers? I said, yes. <laughs> That was what saved us. <laughs> so that evening, they did not allow us to sleep in Nankpanduri. They escorted us to uh, Bumpurgu Yoyo, quite a distance, to sleep there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Let's talk about the uh, I, I fall, I shake, I fall, it, I die. Yeah. Or oh, I fall, I shake. I fall, I shake, shake I die. I die. Yeah. What, uh, what's that documentary It's, it's about? a documentary on epilepsy. I was there one day when... Um, I had done a documentary, no, when I did the Silent Killer documentary, that uh, a documentary on hypertension, mm -hmm. I featured um, a doctor in Kolebu. Mm -hmm. So he left, after the documentary, he told me that you have to do something with epilepsy. And I said, how? There's something people don't want to, to even let the world know that they have that condition. Mm -hmm. So how am I going to do it? He said, well, I have a few patients, probably if we talk to them, they will... So he spoke to them and they said that they will, will be willing. Just one patient I got, mm -hmm. they needed to get more. So I made some calls to people up north everywhere. Then I heard that people up north also had that condition, a number of them. So I traveled to Tamale wow. to get them. And it it's, was a chilling documentary, mm. seriously. Um, bringing to the fore the plight of the people, difficulties in getting drugs, the, the spiritual aspect of it, how we have uh, attributed spiritual meaning to it and those things. Mm -hmm. You know, so people still they didn't know much about it. So I wanted to let the world know about the myth and the, the misconception, those things about epilepsy. And by God's grace, we were able to do it. Now, people have really been educated and uh, a couple I featured in the documentary now move with the CD to show to churches. They are spreading the message okay. about, the, the, about epilepsy. And it's, it's, it was amazing, mm. seriously, yeah. Mm. I mean, 
the, the the other big story you did was the Siamese twins. Yeah. You know, I mean that that was oh. that was big. That was chilling. That was sad, heartbreaking, and I mean, uh, have you been in touch with that woman again? We lost contact like last year. Okay. I've not heard from them again. Okay. I lost their number, and I believe they've also lost my my, my number. Yeah. Mm. I mean. It's not my fault. I mean, he's done so many things. So, you know, we, have to, we have to go through it. Yeah. <laughs> Silent Killer was an eye opener because you don't realize how many hypertension people are walking around with hypertension. Yes. And I got to know that. Or let me ask you mm -hmm. <laughs> do you know when people got to know they were hypertensive? No. That was when they died. Hey. Yeah, when they died. Because. After their death, the autopsy, those things, the reports came in. Their family members were told, well, he, was, he or she was, had hypertension. Wow. It's a silent killer. You may have it, you wouldn't know until you decide to um, get medical help or you, went to, you go to hospital regularly to check on your status. You understand? So it's something that kills people seriously. And we, we don't place much premium on that. So I did this documentary. Uh, somewhere in January. That was the first documentary in the year of 2014 on uh, Joy FM and uh, Joy News. Okay. That was the first one I did in uh, 2014. And I looked at all the aspects of the uh, uh, um, hypertension, people who have it, those who have had stroke because of that. So I, uh, that, was, as you said, was <laughs> eye opener because mm. we. Mm. We spoke about a lot of things. We addressed a number of issues in that documentary too. Borrowed manhood. I remember you called me to watch it. And I just couldn't watch it. Yeah. I am, you know, I am very squeamish like that. Mm. <clears throat> but I want to ask. I mean, do you have a background in medicine, medical biology? Because you, you seem to do a lot of stories in the medical field. Yeah. No, mm. I don't have any training or any background, health background. Mm. Just that. I got to a point, I realized that we didn't know much about our health. Mm. So I took, it, I took it upon myself to investigate that. Let the world know about their, their status, their health status. So mm. I've been doing a lot of research. I only have to hear about the disease, our research, and think of how I can do a documentary to educate people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To educate people. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason. I do a lot of research. I don't just get up and and go, I have a number of doctor friends I consult. Anytime I hear something, I'll just place a call to them. Well, I've heard about this disease. What is it about? Educate me, then they will educate me. Mm -hmm. I'll discuss with them, how can I best explain this to the public for them yeah. to understand? Then they will help me do that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, another big story which, you know, uh, I think we need to talk about is uh, locked and forgotten. Locked and forgotten. You know, I mean, that, was a little revolution on its own. Mm. That documentary was a prison revolution. Mm. You know, uh, how did it start? We went to um, we went to the Upper East Region with the Interior Minister and the, the Director General of the Prison Service. The minister was touring some um, secret installations in the Northern Region, so he went with me. Then we went to the Borga or the Navrongo prisons. It was my first time entering the prison. We got there and I asked, people sleep here? They say yes. I said, what? Here? Wow. Because when the prisoners, inmates were talking to the minister, they told the minister they had forgotten the taste of meat. Because for years, they've not had meat to eat. They've forgotten the taste of sugar. They, they don't know the last time they even used soap. They were telling the minister, so we came so, out, yes, we came out and I told the minister, so this is what we have in this country. Please, would you allow me to do a documentary? And he said, yeah, okay, I will allow you. So he spoke, he spoke to the director general of the prison service and they agreed that I should do a documentary. And I said, I want to concentrate on the remand situation because that's where the problem is, the remand situation. So they, they gave me access, they told me that, well, We've, we've sent um, signals around, go to the prison, you can film anything you want to film. Just go, and it was the first time they were allowing cameras inside the prison to film anything. They gave me access, go, just film anything you want to. 
We know you can do a good job. I mean, we must congratulate Mark Wayongo for that yes. bold. Yes. I think that was really, mm. really bold because we, we have the tendency where when someone is in office, they seem to think, no, I won't show it because That's I will right. look bad. That's right. But this this problem, it's, you know, it's a generation, yeah. it's legendary. It's legendary. I mean, the citation they gave you, you know, says it all. And uh, <laughs> from Chief Justice to President to everyone, you know, couldn't help but, you know, congratulate you yeah. on this. Uh, the, 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 the lady that you got free, the yeah. uh, one with a mental condition. Yeah. I've been speaking to her. And the last time we spoke, she was just blessing me. Was just blessing me. See me back when I bought him in jail and coming down to the prison. Wow! As in, if we hadn't met, she would still have been in jail. Locked and literally locked forgotten. And for, yeah, and forgotten. Seriously, but you know what? Her case. Before we even told the story, you know the promo. Mm. When we started, the promo did the trick. The promo did the trick. So we started the promo. She went to court, and the state attorney came and said. Well, your case, uh, we've, we, we wouldn't continue the case because she wasn't well when she committed the offense. She wasn't mentally sound when she committed the offense. So why must we put you here? You understand? So I'm so grateful to God that uh, this happened. And a number of people are out now. Uh, I remember the chief justice was telling me that uh, because of you, I'm doing a lot of things. Now I will call you the change maker. <laughs> <laughs> that you see, now I've activated the Justice for All program. The judges are all over um, wow. say, going, visiting the prisons to hear cases of remand prisoners. Now we are doing this, we are doing that. And she was thanking me. See? She Oji, was thanking Oji me. Oji Oji I'm going to take a break, but when I come back, I know you developed the night infection when you got to prison. Yes. Therefore you've ended up in glasses. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned and Kwame will tell us the story. This is amazing. <laughs> We're coming back. Well, thank you very much for staying. Still having a heart to heart with my uh, brother. You know, my brother that I am so proud of and I keep telling him, look, keep climbing up the ladder so that I can be pointing fingers and say, you know what? I'm part of his success. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, actually, let me read this before you tell me uh, about, because I know Seth developed an eye infection when he went to our deplorable prisons, and now he has to wear glasses, the dangers of his work. Yeah, now, this is from the Ghana Prison Service Council, uh, Ambassador Extraordinaire Award. Uh, this award is presented to Seth Kwame Boating, my brother, of Multimedia Group. Uh, the Prison Service Council presents this award to you in honor an acknowledgement of your commitment and dedication, dedicated service to the Ghana Prison Service. You produced a chilling documentary about the plight of prisoners dubbed Locked and Forgotten. This documentary has touched the hearts of stakeholders in the criminal justice system and the general public. You unveiled the deplorable conditions in the Ghana's prisons, as well as the obstructions in the justice delivery systems which sometimes results in remand prisoners being kept in custody for unduly long periods uh, through the multimedia group the world has heard the plight of the prisoners and prisons officers many Ghanaians are now aware of the state of the existing prisons infrastructure in the country in recognition and appreciation of your hard work this citation is presented to you on this day, 30th June 2015, as we launch Project Efiasi. Now that is a citation and a half. Wouldn't you want that in your room? I need to go and photocopy that and paste it in my room. Indeed, he was here before uh, Kwame came back and the lady walked by and said, congratulations. I said, thank you very much. <laughs> so, but congratulations again. Thank you, Nana. And uh, let me say, tell me about the eye infection and how you caught it. So. We, we went to the prison, I mean, my cameraman and I, mm -hmm. and the stench, the heat, wow. there alone affected me. Wow. Yes. But so people I, live in it? People, yes. That's what blows my mind. I went there so a few... So for years and years, you, you have to live there? Yes. I went there a few days and look at what I came out with. 
and people are there. That's why we must all be serious about this and help fix the problem because we can all end up there. You may think, well, you are not concerned because no. you are not there or a family member is not there. Nobody can be there. You know, anything can happen anytime and can lead you there. You may be driving, mistakenly you may hit somebody, mm. you may end up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. An incident may happen, you have no knowledge about it, but you may be rounded up and paid. You understand? Yeah. You may not have a lawyer at that time and you'll be put in. Some people have been locked and forgotten. That's why we must all be concerned about this. Mm -hmm. So I went there a few days and look at what I'm wearing now to help me correct the eye problem. Wow. And people are living there and have uh, lived there for, for years. So how do they survive? I mean, what, what do they live on? What oh. food? What? No, no, the food they eat, no, they are giving, each prisoner is fed on one city 80 pesos. No, no, what can one city 80 pesos buy? And it's not one city 80 pesos in the morning, afternoon, evening, one city 80 pesos a day. What can they want? So what? it's two meals or three meals? Three meals. No, no, you wouldn't want to see the food. You wouldn't want to. I'm telling you. And in their cells, they have been arranged, for lack of better word, like sardines. No space, not even an inch space to turn. If they are all facing left, you, you alone can't face right. If you want to face right, you have to convince all of them that we are moving to the right, so let's all move. Whoa. I'm telling you, else you cannot. In the state of, the, of our prisons in, uh, in this country. On the floor or on the mattress? On the floor. On the floor, some of the cells are built to accommodate like five. Mm -hmm. Now have about 40 people. And that is pathetic, seriously. And in the, that documentary, I realized that some of them for like eight years, 10 years, have never been taken to the court. Do you know why no. the investigators have either died or have been transferred out on peacekeeping mission. That's it. That's it. So they are there waiting that one day, one day they will come. They don't know that they are dead. Ish. And I serious. Wow. Wow. What, what, what are some of the real dangers that you would <clears throat> encounter in your day to day? Because all these <clears throat> stories, as they put it, chilling. It, it's not been easy. Anytime I'm ready to step out, I just tell my God, I've come to you for safety. Please protect me as I go out. When I was returning from Nangpanduri, we had an accident, Nana. Mm -hmm. And the car turned and faced where we're coming from. Turned. And from nowhere, I don't know where those sheep were and the goats were. They came from a forest, stood there, and watch us just like that. Then they turn again and went the same time. It's happened between the Little Go and Gambaga Road. The dangers are many. Now, talking about dangers, I mean, on the 20th of August, which is a Thursday, a uh, presidential convoy coming from uh, yeah. the uh, Volta region, obviously uh, the uh, press call for the president. Mm. And I know you are, yeah. you know, the uh, presidential reporter for us. So for, you know, you, once you say you should have been, you know, uh, in that bus. You know, I, my sympathies to the family of um, Samuel Nwama. Mm. I know that guy very well. He's, uh, he's fun to deal with, seriously. Mm -hmm. He's hard working, hard working. Always cracking jokes, joking with us all. Oh, no. And also, I pray that God heals the rest, those who, are, um, who have been hospitalized. Mm -hmm. it's, it's serious. And I was asking myself, what happened? How come on that day you didn't go with them? I've been asking myself so many questions. And I would, I would have been on that same bus. Now, one of the issues that come out is the speed at which you travel. And obviously, you've, you've, been, uh, you've been traveling with them. I mean, do they drive fast? And have they given any reason why they drive fast if they do? Now, now you know, the road has been cleared. You have about six motorcades ahead of you. The road has been cleared. 
and you are speeding. Yes, they speed. But we call that the drivers are well trained. Well trained and they are not just speeding. We have a car ahead of you telling you, okay, there are potholes here, slow down, drive 20 kilometers per hour, drive 100. They are communicating. Okay, so we have school children on your left, so slow down as you take the right turn. There are, there are uh, um, traffic lights ahead of you, so we are approaching the traffic lights, slow down. And now they are communicating everything, so that makes it safe. Ah, I see. So we are not just going, they are communicating everything. So you're not going blind? No, no, no. You have, you yeah. have eyes in the front Exactly. Of you. Telling you um, what's happening on the road, slow down, do this, do that, do that. And you have to respond. All the cars would have to respond. So it's like copy it, copy it, copy it. Meaning, okay, mm -hmm. I, I heard you and I will observe. So it's safe. I don't know. I'm told this time uh, my colleagues were coming alone. Two buses, they were coming alone and it happened. So they were not part of the president's convoy. They oh, took the so lead. They didn't have the benefit of what's in front exactly. and all that. Yeah, so they were coming alone and, and, and this unfortunate thing happened. And now it's God who has been keeping us. It's not been easy. If you are somebody who can't, who, are not, who is not comfortable with the speed you go, you can't. Seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, many times we are going out, we have to pray to God what, to, to what, keep what, us. What would it entail as a presidential reporter? So, run us through them. You, you, you get up in the morning, let's say you have to go to hold, and what, what do you do? Um, at times, when you are lucky, you'll be told the. Uh, you'll be told of the assignment the next day, the previous day. Mm -hmm. That is the evening you'll be sent, um, messages will be sent that tomorrow you are going here or that. At times you'll be there and they'll tell you, get to the place in five minutes time. Meaning wherever you are, you have to drive fast to that place. So it's not that we know our schedule for the week. Okay. No, as and when. So for example, if the president has assignment tomorrow, um, you may be told this evening mm -hmm. that uh, tomorrow the president has assignment and we are all meeting. At nine. Okay. Um, at times you'll be called, just come, rush to the flagstaff house or rush there, rush to this place. The president is going there, then you go. So we are like military men. You have to be prepared always. In the past, I remember when President Mills was there, I had a, I had a bag full of my, my things. Just because, the yeah, that time they could call you anytime. Okay, so where are you? we are going to Borgan now. It means you have to bring your things. So I would, I had always no, packed no, my no, things there. So anytime they call me, I'll just ask somebody, please, can you meet me with my things because I'm traveling? Wow. wow. But you see, sir, uh, why don't they use like correspondents in Bulga or correspondents in Volta? Why does the president travel with all the press call? You know, we have access to the president. Okay. There are some sounds you may not get, some visuals you may not get if you have not been cleared as a presidential correspondent. You okay. know, we, we've got through security screening, security checks, uh, those things. Okay. And they should know you before they allow you to get to the president. So not anybody at all will be allowed to get closer. I see. No. I see. You have to be cleared. They have to know you. The security guys would have to know you everything before you'll be allowed to get to where the president is. So I, I think that's the reason behind it. That's why they move with us. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, we wish them all well and hope mm. that, you know, we don't hear any more yes. bad stories. But there's somebody who, you know, is my favorite in your family, even though I've never met her, and it's your mom. And I know by now she'll be head to my heels, <laughs> resting with more pride than I have. How is she taking this award? So on Saturday, um, I called her that I had been nominated. I didn't know I was going to pick the ultimate. I didn't know. Mm. I just told her I've been nominated and I was driving. I will say this in three. Oh, come on, Miss Yai. Me do new use more genuine. Me do a cognac cotton as new use more genuine. Me do a cognac new use more genuine. A general could do new use more genuine. She was blessing me, telling me God is with me. Um, uh, the blood of Jesus has covered me, so I'm safe, I'm secured. You can't, you can't touch her mother. She's blessings. very excited. Wow. Very, very excited. Sat Sunday. We spoke and she said she went to church that morning for a Thanksgiving service. <laughs> and when she went to church, almost everybody came to her to hug her, to say, and TB, you've done well, congratulations. It's God who has done this. She's so grateful to go. But you know what she told me? She said, don't be too excited about this. 
yes, you've achieved this, to but you can do come. more. So, yes, celebrate, but in moderation. Because now, people have high expectations of you. Mm -hmm. You can't lower the, the bar. You either maintain it or you move up. And that's what I've been thinking about since Saturday. How am I going to improve upon what I've achieved? I dare not come down. No. And it's become another burden. And I'm unable to celebrate because I'm writing the exam from next week. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I move with my books. As the calls are coming in, I'll be, I'll be looking at my books as well. Let me take a break here. And then for those of you who missed the other one, we'll go back and just to the beginning stages of Kwame and see how did it all happen. Don't move. as a receptionist Whoa. even though I was there my ultimate aim was to be in the newsroom that was my ultimate aim because I had a senior called um, Joseph PJ mm -hmm. who who worked in one of the radio stations in Kumasi capital radio okay so I told myself I want to be like Joseph PJ I also want to speak on radio but I wanted to be in the newsroom so um, when I got the chance to work as a receptionist one um, one day, I told the editor that I want to be in the newsroom. He said, for now, just be where you are. I was supposed to report at work at 7 p.m., but I always went at 4 p.m. And I, I went to the newsroom and, um, get, a feel and of get a feel of what they were doing. So that was how I started. Wow. Wow. So which, which of the universities did you choose? I went to University of Cape Coast. Okay. And God was so good to me, I got a chance to work on the campus, uh, with a campus-based radio station, Radio Vaco. Okay. And um, Radio Vaco was an affiliate of Joy FM. Mm -hmm. So I got the opportunity to be a stringer for Joy FM, or if you like, their central regional correspondent, mm -hmm. from second year till I completed school in 2007. Wow. Yeah. So for you, it was your passion and your dream? Yes. Yes. And... Um, Aside that, I told myself that I could, as at that time, um, work hard, get a chance to be in the limelight and also help others. That was my ultimate goal. Well, what was life like before coming through school? Because daddy passed away quite early. Yeah. Well, Nana, um, my father was 60 years old when he gave birth to me. Pension baby. Pension baby. When he died, I was 17 years old. He died at the age of 77. Okay. Nana, I'm the last of 17 children. <laughs> 11 boys. <laughs> hey. 11 boys, mm -hmm. 6 girls, 6 girls, okay, in quotes. Oh, okay, yeah. And I'm the last. Whoa. Not with one woman, mm -hmm. about four. And if I don't tell you, that is, if you come to our house, or even now, if you meet all of us, all the 17, and I don't tell you we are not from the same mother, you never believe. You will never believe. And the life wasn't easy. I, I tell people all the time that it got to a point. Um, I had to beg before I could get food to eat. Wow. Yeah. It got to a point. Um, I had to uh, to be smart and find ways of getting food to eat. So I could come to your house and challenge you that I can eat, I can eat or finish um, two cups of rice. You try me and see. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a trick. At times, <laughs> I got people to say, okay, we will try. If you don't finish this food, we will take our money. Yeah. They will try. I, can, I could eat only uh, some Portion, man, portion, but up. no, and they'll be angry and say, take the rest home. I'll say, thanks be to God. <laughs> it means that even our food to eat, the next day I also get food to eat, another food to eat. Wow. At times, I had to go about searching for money, well, especially around football field. No, mm -hmm. because people go there all the time <coughs> to watch football and to play. At times, I, I will get some coins. And, um, Nana, hmm. My mother used to tell us something, that what you're going through 
face it now face it squarely because there are better times ahead you must go through it now don't defer go through it now and that should push you to learn then i was determined to make it and she used to tell us that we can never fail even if we want to fail because failure is not part of our D uh, dna so we can't fail so i had that right from the scratch so in all my dealings in everything and i I knew I was going to make it, and I had no reason not to learn. Even on a hungry stomach. Yes, I had no reason not to learn. I remember when I was writing uh, a month to BEC, I had started have, uh, developing ulcer, and I'm, as we speak, I'm still battling with that disease, battling that disease, ulcer. So a month at, uh, before BEC, I wasn't going to school. Whoa. I was very ill, I wasn't going to school. I don't know how I was even able to write BC and I got 16. 16. I wanted to um, attend uh, Kumasi High. Kumasi High was my first choice. Then TI Amedia was my second choice. Then Kumasi Anglican was my third choice. 16. Kumasi High. No way. Amas, no way. I was fortunate that where we lived at Juso, the next house. Uh, we have this nurse, may her soul rest in peace, um, uh, Auntie, Auntie, Auntie Cecilia, or Mama Cecilia. That, we, that was how we called her. I think she saw something in me. So she told me that, said, I have to help you, no matter what. If I help you, I know that I will have good stories to tell in the future. Not a story, stories to tell. I'm going to take a break here because <clears throat> I'm actually blown away with Seth's story. And fast forward to today, some of the amazing stories that Seth has come up with. Whoa, has it been inspired from her humble beginnings? Who knows? Maybe. Don't go away. Well, so that was Kwame's beginnings, as you just heard. I mean, the interview was much longer than that, but at least you got a gist of where he's come from to where he is now so we'll say you know my story you know my glory but you don't know my story Kwame what's next because we, now we are expecting more <laughs> uh, and the pressure is on <laughs> um, I'm working on a number of documentaries I'm telling you wow. I'm unable to go into the details of it but I'm working on um, maybe other mind-blowing documentaries oh. Um, and they are coming up. And Nana, the last time you interviewed me, I told you that I was now trying to specialize. That's why I'm, I've gone back to school. Sure. Now I want to, um, I'm reading Conflict, Peace and Security at the Kofi Annan Peace Keeping Training Center. Ajay, Ajay, yeah, yeah, for, yeah. Very, very, in line, very in line with your school name. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm trying to understand what it is and the role I can play uh, to help deal with the numerous uh, conflicts we have in this country and what kind of report I can, I can um, do, you understand, to ensure that we have peace all over this country. Okay. So that's what I'm looking at, speci specialization. Um, aside that, other projects have come up. This is a fierce project. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been given an ambassadorial position and I'm um, to help fix the problems in the prison. So I remember last Saturday when the president was giving me the ultimate award, mm -hmm. those who watched were surprised. Ah, the president hugged you and gave you that strong um, uh, shake. shake, handshake, and at a point, you, the two of you were interacting. What was he telling you? <laughs> the president was telling me about the steps he was taking or he's taking to fix the problems I raised in the documentary. So he was telling me one by one what he's doing. So I'm also supposed to help fix the problems in the prisons, which I'm doing. And that's my assignment. Mm -hmm. And um, I will very soon let the world know about um, the help I will need from the public to help me deal with that problem. So I'm working on all these projects um, for, for now, Nana. And I'm also concentrating on my school. How is Mrs. Watson doing? Oh, she's very, 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 very fine. And I think she's the happiest wife on earth today. Okay. And she's been, she's been very healthy. You know, um, I said this last week and I'm repeating. I said this early this week and I'm repeating. It's in the Bible. He who finds a wife, finds a good thing 
and receives favor. I found her and this favor has come. And I'm so grateful to her. I hear you're keeping her up at night and therefore she's, uh, she's on the lumpy side. Well, that's what people say. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. You know, it's like, uh, again, well, you found a good thing. Yeah. And you found double favors. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, na double, double. Everything, na double, double. <laughs> <laughs> well, Seth, I mean, you've, you've, you've worked hard to achieve this. And one thing I want the youth to get out of this interview is that, you know, kill me quick attitude, just, you know, shortcut attitude. I want my fame today. It's not as, because normally you hear some of these names as if they just, mm. you know, they just arrived and mm. did one documentary and then also. But it's taking that step. So you need to advise them that, look. Nana, I've come to realize mm. that it pains, but pays to wait. Mm. Pains. Mm -hmm but pays, pays to, wait. to wait. It wasn't easy waiting, mm -hmm. but I did. Mm -hmm. And we can see the results. Sure. Sure. So, and also, you see, uh, be, be happy, you understand, with what you are doing. Be happy with the little that you have mm -hmm. and tell God to help you increase it. Mm -hmm. And never underestimate where you are coming from. If I had underestimated where, I'm, where I was coming from, where I'm, I've come from, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have gotten to where I am now. I told myself, anything ha that happened to me was a stepping stone, a stepping stone, a stepping stone. The speech I read on that day, I wrote that speech eight years ago. Eight years ago, I knew that one day one day I was going to receive this ultimate award. I had that positive mental attitude right from the beginning. So, eight years ago, I wrote that speech, and Israel, I could jump on Kruma, some sladi. Anytime I read that speech, they were like, You're not serious. <laughs> <laughs> yes, eight years ago. And every year, I pick the paper mm -hmm. and I add more names. Those who have helped me, I add more names. So, that day, last Saturday, when I was going, I picked the paper, I read it, and I added some names. I said, Well, in case I win it today, I'm going to mention these names. And I did. God was so good to me. Be positive. Be positive. Know that you can so you do have it. To write a new speech, because yeah. now you've used it. Yeah, I have to. So you have to. You have to not write a new. You have to write a new it's speech because like, you can't come and repeat exactly. the speech. Exactly. God has been good. Yeah. And I have been positive. Me, I don't know. No. If you tell me no, I don't understand. Hmm. And I hate people who are fond of discouraging others. Even if I'm dying, tell me, said you will live. Tell me, that's what I want to hear. Say to you, live, you can do it. Give it a try. You can do it. Tell me that. That's what I want to hear. Never discourage me. So I hate discouraging people. I tell them, you can do it. Just try. Seth, on that note, I want to say thank you very much. Mm. And uh, as for you know me, anytime I meet you, I have to remind you of how proud I am of you. But yes, <laughs> Nana Oji is here for. Am I the first or the second? The first. The first, okay. The first. The first. <laughs> I know Jay here for Kwame Boatin, in charge of uh, social welfare and also you know, advising the chief as to how to move the town forward. He has gladly accepted right on air. And I'm extending this to all the people of Akwamu and Edumasa. And Akwa Fuakotu the third. Here we are, another young dynamic man to come and join us and help us. So thank you so much. I'm grateful, Nana. Keep going. The summit still up there. Amen. Folks, until next Friday that I come to you with a different personality, thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful week.